Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Session Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the Facing My Fear of Emotion Q&A presentation, Jesus answers questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation, Facing My Fear of Emotion. Recorded on the 9th of March, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's let me just, uh, let's, yeah, I just need, we'll move on to the fear of emotion, even though we've been talking mostly about it already. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> okay, so if we come down to Maxine. Yeah. Yeah, fear of emotion. Um, I remember you talking about um, that you also have to fear, fear all your fears of siblings and in the family. I've got 14 siblings, so <laughs> how much? <laughs> the action, I, I just, I have blockages to my emotions. Um, how, how many of those siblings are older than you? They all are. Mm. Yeah, a lot of mummies and daddies there, eh? Yeah, this is why I call it the family of origin because it's not just your mum and dad but all of their treatment of you too which is a reflection of mum and dad's emotion. Mm. So what do you do? What do you think you do? Feel all the emotion. <laughs> well, it, yeah, in the end, in the end I think I think you sort of feel like, well, because I've got 14 siblings, it means I've got 14 times more work to do. Yeah. And that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> all of us, all of our souls are like a bucket, right? That's full of stuff. Right? Now, if I draw in red the crappy stuff, a lot of it's full of the crappy stuff, right? So it's just all of our hurt and then also a lot of, um, and then perhaps if I draw it a different way, I'll just put them around the other way because this is usually the layers that have to come off first. And then there's the facade that I put on my hurt, right? And we'll talk a lot more of that in the next groups that we have in May and June. So there I go and then, then obviously there's there's a bit of real self left in there somewhere but unfortunately it's pretty buried a lot of the times under these other things. Now how much emotion am I going to have to address is your question and there's a fear that drives the question. Can you see what the fear is? I can feel a little bit of it. What's the fear? Um. Facing it. Yeah, you, you basically want to know how long it's going to take, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, so if you use the mic up higher yeah. so we can hear. Yeah, so you want to know how long it's going to take. Now, how long does it take to empty a glass of water? In an instant. Well, does it? Like, I don't know if it's an instant. <laughs> I, I can giggle it pretty quick. Now, if I've got, got a truckload of water, how long does it take to, em to empty that? Yeah, more time. No, the answer really is to both questions, as long as it takes. As a piece of string. <laughs> that's, the, that's the answer, <laughs> yeah. as long as it takes. Now, now, a person who truly wants to love and is tru truly exercising their will to love understands that how long it takes doesn't matter. How much is there doesn't matter. They will just keep doing it and keep doing it till it's done. Now most of you don't want to have that answer. And this is why you ask a lot of questions about your emotion because you don't want to know how, you want to know how long it's going to take so you can plan for that. You want to know how intense it's going to be so you can plan for that. And you want to know how much it's going to impact your life so you can plan for that. And this tells me that actually what you're doing is what? Just being afraid of how long each one of those things are. 
making excuses. Yeah, they can become excuses. That's the reality. Now, if this is a you know soul full of emotion, to me, it depends primarily on a couple of factors, right? The first factor is how much is in there. So if I've got a truckload, then obviously, which I've had, you know, um, obviously it's going to take a while. Right? And it might take 20 years. Is it worth doing? Yes, it is. If it takes 50 years, is it worth doing? Yes, it is. See, it's, it's worth doing no matter how long it takes. Right? Second thing is the other, the other factor, which you do have control over, is how fast you do it. Isn't it? Now, if, 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 you, if you had a truckload and you did it had it in a tipper, a tipper truck, you just go, and it done. <laughs> so if we were capable of doing that emotionally, if a truckload or a beaker full um, doesn't really make any difference. But let's say you had a 500 litre bottle and you go, drip, 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 <laughs> once every 10 years. And can I ask God to be the truck for a moment? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, God wants you to deal with it and God knows you can deal with it as rapidly as you're able to cope with the emotion. And when I say able to cope with the emotion, God knows you can cope with all emotion. But God also knows that there's a layers of emotion. There's layers of facade that have to come off before you'll feel your hurt. And there's layers of hurt that have to come off before you'll feel your real self. Now, how fast that happens is completely up to you, not God. It's not up to God at all. It's up to you. You want someone else to help you. Yes, I do. Which is a fear. Now, God's going to help you because anybody who's good would help you. right? But he's not going to allay your fear for you while he does it because that would be an addiction that he'd be meeting and he can't do that. So he's not going to rub away this fear you have. You follow? So you're going to have to address this fear you have that it might take 10 years and it might be very painful for 10 years. And you're going to have to address that fear. But is it worth it? Now at this stage I don't know if you believe it is. Because your natural response is, no, it's not. <laughs> right? And that's the reason why you're not getting started. Because you're not really sure whether 10 years of release is actually worth the potential outcome. Now, at this stage, the other problem with that is you don't know what the outcome is going to be. You don't know how good it's going to be for your life, right? You just have someone like me telling you, and you know, who knows, I could be an idiot, right? I could be. You're going to have to determine it for yourself, aren't you? whether it's worth it. So what I would do if I was you is I'd gauge one or two experiences, see whether it changes some of your life. If it, if it now appears to you to be worth doing, then surely the next step would be to do it as more rapidly as you could possibly do it so that you're not left with this emotion inside of you affecting negatively your life. You follow? So, so we need to stop asking the questions of how long, how much. Does he agree? <laughs> for, the, for the people in the video, one of our babies in the audience just had a, what would you call it? Sort of like, <laughs> <laughs> right in that moment. Yeah. So, so the real feeling we need to address is, look, this is worth it. It takes me however long it takes me. The reality is, for me, like I started my process when I was 33 years old, I'm now 53 years old, and 53 years old tomorrow. So, so far I've been doing it 20 years. And do you see me giving up anytime soon? <laughs> Not really, hey? Even though it's taken that long. So I started this process, um, I was living in South Australia, and yeah, my life's changed immensely since then, since that time. But it's taken 20 years so far. And I'm still not done. 
right? So when you guys ask me, you know, how long is it going to take? Is it going to be over in three years? I go, who cares? Like, it's over when it's over. What matters is that you do it. Because you're going to have to do it sooner or later, whether it's here on earth or in the spirit world, you're going to have to do it. Right? Or the law of compensation is going to grind you <laughs> into, into do, dealing with things over thousands of years. So it's far better to do it God's way just over a few years, even if it takes you 20. If you think about like, the, gate, the books uh, written by Robert James Lees, it took Afra 32 years or something. And that was in the spirit world. It took him 32 years. Um, for most of you, looking at a project like that is daunting, right? But if you really had any perspective, you'd see, oh, well, you know, if I live forever, 32 years is not very long, is it? It's not very long. The sooner I get started, the sooner I'll be finished. The faster I do it, the sooner I'll be finished. Yeah. So I do feel, though, that it is one of the reasons why people don't choose to feel emotion, because they feel that it's all going to be too much, it's going to take too long, it's going to be forever, and, and, as a result, and they don't measure the potential results at the end, or even the actual results at the end, and they don't even have any conviction or faith that the actual results are, you know, will apply to them. And so in the end, of the day, they decide the best thing to do is not start. And that's what you've got to be very careful of, deciding, not starting. There's a certain amount in there. How long it takes, dependent on you, really. Re really, It's dependent on how much is in there, but it's also dependent on you and how rapidly you're willing to f experience how much is in there. And as I've said to you, I've, I've taken 20 years so far, so are you, are you ready, potentially, for a 20-year project? Uh, ironically, you know, when you meet an addiction, a 20-year project seems like nothing. Uh, many of you ladies have had, a, uh, you, you, have, you have given birth three times. There's three 20-year projects. Is it not? Three 20-year projects and you didn't give it a thought. You just went ahead and did it. <laughs> right? And then when I say well, dealing with emotion might be a 20-year project, you go, oh, God, 20 years of that. <laughs> right? Can you see when we meet addictions, 20-year project is like nothing. When we're not meeting our addictions and we're having to confront them, 20-year project now seems like forever. So again, it's perspective driven by feelings and emotions inside of us. So, so if you just look at it like, I'm giving birth to the real me. <laughs> and I've got 20 years to sort myself out, then that would be a good start. And if it takes that long, it takes that long. But after a few years, you'll feel the benefits of it, if you do it the right way, God's way, you'll feel the benefit of it, and then you'll be motivated to continue. Yep. Glindy, you want to... Oh, Basically, you just answered it. I was going to say, even though it's a 20-year project, you would feel benefits immediately, wouldn't you, if you really healed an addiction? So Yeah, like if I look at my 20-year project so far and I go right back to the beginning, um, and remember, like it was about uh, seven years into my project, I, I once saw a person who was a medium and she said, she said, I hadn't begun yet, and that was seven years into my project. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was a bit of a surprise. But, but after I started having the feelings about who I was, and then I realised what she meant. But anyway, um, before then, the, you know, the seven years up to that point even, um, yeah, within probably three months or so, I was really starting to see some of the benefits internally and, and externally in terms of how I was feeling about myself, how I viewed the world. I can remember the very first time that I ever felt happy um, in my adult life was, was within the first year of, of that process. So, yeah, you do feel the benefits. And then, of course, that gives you faith to continue... And the then process. feeling God's love would also be very motivating. Yeah, well, that didn't begin for me until much later, like seven years or so later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I was in this phase of feeling like God rejected me and so forth because of leaving a religion and so forth. Yeah, so that didn't happen too much later. But, 
But once that happened, yeah, certainly things felt much better after then. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, if we go to Graham, thanks. Um, when it comes to feeling my big emotions, uh, I'm terrified. Mm -hmm. um, so much so that I have fear of feeling my terror, of feeling my emotions. <laughs> yes, I get it, yeah. And I may even sort of have fear of feeling my fear, of feeling my fear, <laughs> of feeling my terror, of feeling my emotions. Yeah, no, I get you. <laughs> um, and what it boils down to is that I really, being honest, I really have zero will to feel my big emotions. Mm -hmm. I've got a little bit of will to feel my little stuff. I agree. Um, and I don't know where to go with respect to feeling the big ones, you know? So, so the question is, how do I build my will, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, I, when, my, when my will is so strong to not feel it. Yeah, so how do you build your will? Now, that question has already been answered by Mary two years ago in the, in the first assistance group, how to build your will. And we will also be answering it again in two days' time how to build your will. So, um, but, but what you need to do is go back to the basic principles of building a muscle. It's the same process. At this stage, you've been quite resistive to building the muscle. It's sort of like, it's, a, it's like a person who's sitting down in front of the telly, like looking at somebody else exercising and going, that looks like too much hard work for me, type <laughs> of thing, right? And, and from an emotional perspective, what's gonna motivate that guy to actually stop watching telly and actually do a bit of exercise. What's going to motivate him? Obviously, there's got to be internal things that change, doesn't there, Graham, to motivate him at some point. Nobody else can really do it for him. He, he needs to make an internal choice and decision at some point. Part of that is going to be realising the benefits, isn't it? Like, if he's putting on weight, he, he, he'd get to the point where well, I, I want to you know, get my body back. So that, that might be one of the benefits. Another benefit might be that, um, you know, in the case of the guy who's sitting in front of the telly, you know, he's getting a bit chubby and his wife doesn't find him as, as attractive much anymore. And so, so there's less sex or something. And he might decide, oh, I'll get a bit more sex if I get... And that might be enough of a benefit to motivate him. But there has to be some kind of positive motivation inside of him to cause him to make the decision. Now, now that means developing this motivation somehow, internally, within, our, within oneself, because you can't really rely on anybody else to do that for you, because you're, you're with you 24-7, so you're the one that needs to have that motivation. And, and that's why we've got our program on, uh, in two days' time focusing our attention on what is our motivation, what's going to be our motivation to use our will in a loving way. So I feel you, you've learnt enough information in your head about emotion without actually releasing any, so you've not yet measured the benefit of releasing very much emotion. You've learnt a lot about God's principles and God's laws, a lot of which you love, Right? So, so you do have this underlying desire and love for those c particular principles, but not yet enough to motivate you over your fear. Right? Then there is a temptation in you to continue feeding addiction when it comes to your fears, particularly with women in particular. And so that, that then causes you to suppress things emotionally, so you're not, your emotions are not raw under those p circumstances. So that's also having an effect on you. And we could probably list four or five other things also that are having an effect on the decision. Just like the guy sitting on the couch watching the telly rather than exercising, it has a number of different things that have motivated him to stay there. Does that make sense? And what you need to be able to do for yourself is to look at what your motivations are to stay there and then examine the motivations you have to get off of that place and, and, and build the motivation to get off and reduce the motivation to stay. And that's an internal decision as well as actions you can take to reduce the motivation to be stagnant and increase the motivation to change. Does that make sense? But they are actions that you will need to take at some point. No, nobody else can do that for you. Yeah. 
So hopefully the program in the next couple of days will help, help you in some of that direction and also go back to the program in the first um, assistance group uh, when Mary talked about how, she, how to build the will rather than she, she talks of willpower versus will and how to build the will and since she talks about how to build the will to connect to God as well in another talk in that, in that series and then look at the next couple of days that we do and you'll have some pretty good ideas about how to do it and then it's just a matter of, of choosing to change your own will reducing your will to remain stagnant and increasing your will to activity does that make sense so that that's going to be an educational process for yourself choosing to educate yourself to do that swing about yeah yeah but good question christiana thank you i have a fear of getting lost in an emotion and um uh a couple of days ago I was processing and I felt I was really in the flow and then all of a sudden got jammed up and then I just, I wasn't quite sure of what to do, where to go um, and I just just dropped into my fear and just, yeah, I've just been blocked ever since. So. Yeah, well, again, it's like, okay, you were feeling an emotion, something happened to cause, cause it to stop flowing. Obviously, it's a resistance of some kind. Sure. So the key now is to discover the resistance. Now, God wants to tell you what it is. Yeah. And the fact that you don't know what it is means that he hasn't told you or you haven't heard it. So that means that you don't want to. So I would start there. I'd say, okay, I was crying about a subject. So what was the subject you were crying about? Can you remember? Um, uh, it was triggered by your comment of saying God wants what's inside. So that um, really triggered my right. feelings of that I'm a bad person and whatever and, and how de you know why would, on earth would God want, want that. what's inside. Okay, yeah. so it began with this underlying uh, understanding that you have that you or feeling that you have that you're a bad person inside. Yeah. Okay, so, so th yeah, that's going to be, uh, you're going to have quite a lot of resistance around that particular emotion. Mm. Um, so, so what kind of resistances could there be? Um, yeah, just that it's untrue. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, well, you, you don't believe, at, in the core, you don't believe that you're worthy of God. Yep. Yeah. Right, so that that's underneath. But but w why would a person not feel like they have any worth? Um, it's because yeah. of how they've been treated, right? Yep. So so what I'm suggesting to you is is that is that if you're starting to cry about that particular issue and then all of a sudden you stop, it's because you don't want to feel about how you've been treated. Yeah. And if you chose to just feel about how you've been treated uh, in your childhood, I'm talking about now, yeah. um, then you would probably get through the barrier. But, but the barrier may be anything, Christiana. Yeah. It may be anything. And the key for you is to decide, OK, I've stopped crying. I was crying. I've stopped crying. I feel a bit terrible now. Obviously, I'm suppressing. Yeah. That's my choice. Hmm. It's not, it's not magical. It's <laughs> it was so frustrating, though. <laughs> well, no. Yeah. See, that's the facade at work now, getting yeah. all frustrated. Like, the reality is that you've chosen to shut down an emotion and, uh, and as, it's a choice to what, do that. What so. if I don't know... I can't remember much about how I was actually treated and I get a sense that it must be my... Mu uh, I feel it might be No, no, mind. don't do all yeah. that because that's, okay. that's all just intellectual gymnastics. You've got no idea, right? Okay. Uh, so just say, I've got no idea. What, it doesn't matter what the emotion's about. Mm -hmm. What matters is what your block's about. Okay. That's what matters. Mm -hmm. right. And then you must have felt something the moment it all shut down. Yeah. And you need to go back to that and look yep. at what you were feeling the moment it shut down, because there's your block. Yep. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. And all you've got to do is fill your block and you'll be in business again. Okay, yes. Yep. <laughs> so, so whenever we shut down, it's a choice. We need to see it as a choice, take responsibility for the fact we've made a choice. It's not some magical thing. There's a choice being made. I made a choice. My soul made a choice. 
Yeah. Okay, my soul wants to avoid this emotion. And then the question, obviously, is why? What, 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 why does my soul want to avoid that emotion? What, 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 what was the emotion, the ne other emotion, the resistance emotion, mm. that blocked me up? Mm. What is it about this that I don't want to feel? Yeah. And, and honour the fact that you don't want to, and then you might get somewhere. Okay. Remember I said to the, uh, a few days ago with Jen in the conversation with Jen about the importance of recognising that you don't want to do something is really important. The next step here after that is to feel about why you don't want to because there's, there's your blocking emotions. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Good Thank you. Well, we must uh, stop because we're already behind time today. So um, if we could come back at 20 to, 20 to 2... Um, so you've got just over 22 minutes <laughs> as a break. Thanks, guys.